one another in prayer. Amen. Morning, Beth Eaton. It's offertory time. Oh, okay, okay. You got kind of quiet when I said it was offertory time. <laughs> you know, the church survives on what uh, on what we're able to give and contribute to the organization. So we have to be cognizant of that uh, when we do things. Uh, Jesus uh, always gave. God gave His Son so that we might have life. And Jesus continues to give us life as he intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. And I just want to share some scripture this morning. And it comes from the 38th, uh, 38th uh, verse of the sixth chapter of Matthew. And it says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. That means whatever you give is going to come back to you Amen. by more than one fold. You guys are quiet this morning. You're quiet. The church is quiet. I hope the people online are, are shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we have various ways to give. You can give through Givelify, Venmo, PlayPal, the U.S. mail. You can send it to the church. You bring it to the church mailbox. I think the church uh, 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 tre uh, sec uh, treasury secretary, she's here on uh, Thursday, so you can bring it in and bring it into the office uh, that uh, your offering may be recorded to you and to your name and that the Lord knows what's in our heart as we give. Amen. Amen. We will now have our offering litany led by Brother Vincent Keeling. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am not Vincent, but as he comes, we know that. Happy birthday, Vincent. And the offering litany is found on the card in the behind the. Uh, it's. It's time to give. Praise the Lord. What kind of giver does the Lord love? God loves a cheerful giver. To whom does the tithe belong? The tithe belongs to the Lord and all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. Who should tie? Let every one of you lay by him in store. God has prospered. Why should we tie? Because the Lord says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Should we tie all of our increase? Thou shalt truly tie all the increase of thy seed, that the field bring forth year by year. How much should we tie? Now consider how great this man was to whom Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil. What is God's promise to the tithers? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for the sake of shall he shall not be sure. <laughs> Say the Lord of hosts. 
Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. that we're still observing our, our protocols. Our ushers will bring plates down to this area in front of this podium and this area in front of this podium. And I want everybody on this side to get up and bring your offering to this plate. This side, get up and bring the offering to this plate. And you online, please be sure to mail it in. Give through Venmo, Givelify, PayPal, please. Let's give, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with our gifts and our offerings. Lord, we ask that you uh, receive our gifts and offerings. Bless those who are able to give, those who weren't able to give, that this may be used for the betterment of your kingdom here and for the church and community here on 10th Street. Lord, we pray that those that gave, gave cheerfully and have a free heart, Lord, and we ask that it's received in the same manner. Bless those, we pray, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen, church. Hallelujah. He'll make it all right. I have the honor to read the scripture this morning, and the scripture is from Acts 16, from um, the 25th verse to the 34th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and he saw the prison doors open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all the family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of God's word.
grateful today how many of you are grateful today just raise your hand if he's just done one thing for you just this morning amen I'm grateful for that amen I am grateful for all the things that you have done yes I am Grateful for the victory that we've won. I could go on and 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 on about your work because I'm so grateful just to pray. 
trouble time. And uh, it's your fault, Michaela, because you picked that song. Great. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble because I'm, I'm going to lead something and somebody out. But it really, really doesn't. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for a volunteer in Mildred Oliver who we could not pay for what she does to assist. I think you have to turn this one off. But it's not just her. I, I, I'm grateful for yesterday there were, there were deacons, Deacon Mitchell, Deacon Harris, and Deacon Brown that were out here helping us with traffic control. Even though he wasn't here, generally and almost always, Deacon Reynolds is on the spot. I'm grateful for Carl Blackshear, who we can count on at the drop of the hat. We don't, he doesn't look for nothing. He doesn't even want us to call his name. But I'm grateful for another Carl Seabrook and Carl Seabrook and Ron jo uh, Jones together. Go out on 10th Street. Look, I am grateful that we didn't have an earthquake. And listen, we sang a song on the hill far away was an old rugged cross. Well, we had an old rotten cross up there. And if you don't believe that it was rotten, go into the garbage cage over there and you can see how rotten it was. But because of those individuals and, and, and doing what they did, we were able to get that thing cut down. How do you know? Because I went up in the lift and I saw it myself, even though I knew my wife might not like that. But nonetheless, I did that. I'm grateful to, to Proctor uh, because he was pressed into service on the day before and, and worked over in the Family Life Center along with trustee Ron Jones. I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for these folk who, who, who are here that, that uh, Deacon Gary Warren is sitting back in the back just watching us and watching the doors. I'm grateful for the tech that we have with Deacon Alan Harris and, and, and Deacon Robert Oliver. Uh, well, it, sometimes if it goes out, they record it and you'll hear it later on, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for Trustee Henry, who, who, who just is served and, and continues to help. And then after the wedding, I'm grateful for, for Sister Jane uh, 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 Hamilton Jones and Sister Sharice Daniels and uh, Sister Latanya Mitchell, who stayed around here and cleaned up everything. And, tried to put stuff back together. I know I'm getting in trouble because I know I'm leaving people out, but I'm grateful to the Browns for, we wanted Vincent Keeling to speak for a very long time, and he did, and he did well, and I'm grateful for all of that. Uh, I, I'm just grateful uh, for those things and these folk. I'm grateful for the cherries who are blessing and, and working with us along with uh, Reverend Galloway Lee. We, we're doing something for this congregation. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for those that I, that I left out, you know, I didn't tell you I was grateful for Skylar, but I'm grateful for Skylar because I left her name out one time. She felt some kind of way, but I, 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 I got her. I, 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 I'm Hayden, I'm grateful for her. Uh, Jojo, I'm grateful for our children. I keep messing with Sierra because I still don't believe she's the age she says he is. But, but I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, for all these folk, for, for, my, for my sisters, uh, uh, for my, my brothers, for all of you who have done. And my, my, my sister in craziness, Reverend Sharon Clayton. I'm, I'm grateful, I'm grateful for Sister Adeline Washington for her Tuesday after Tuesday puts up with both me and Dolores Villa Summers on the prayer band call. Yes, you too. And, 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 but she serves, she serves. We got people who are serving, Barbara there. We, we, the, 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 oh Lord, the, the Calvins, we, the, the Lord is blessing us. 
And there still are lean folk who, and we go, I'm, I'm coming at you. I'm just giving you warning. I'm coming at you. We, we, there, are, there are folk in this congregation, the Burks, we're going to put you to work. We go, April, you know we're going to put you to work. This is for the kingdom, the commonwealth, and the cause of Christ. For building up the work. For building up the work. For building up the work. And we thank you. And, 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 and who can match the inimitable Tasha Jordan Oliver and her expertise in arranging and decorating and... And we got a young man, Noah Arm. Let me give him a plug. He's got a group of young men that serve. And if you can catch him on his schedule, you might want to, I think he's got a website. You might want to catch him and, and see whether or not you can pitch some work his way. Uh, we, we thank God that we, we have a lot that we can do if we will just do it. If we will just do it. Now, I didn't mean all of that, but I, like I told you, that was Michaela's fault. Let, let, let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Warak and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank Reverend Dr. Bobby Galloway Lee for reading uh, our scripture, that pericope. I'm, I'm going to read it again fast, and then I'm going to read a second uh, scripture with that. Um, but you, these, these are stories that you know. And the interesting thing about this pericope, and the preachers probably know this already, there are probably four or five sermons just in this pericope. And I ain't going to preach them all. But I need you to understand that, that sometimes text is so rich. There's so much going on. And I just want to take a slant on this and an angle on this. Acts 16, 25 to 34 in the New Revised Standard Version reads on this wise. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. There's a sermon there. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. There's another sermon. That cross could have come down, broke here, and broke out there. There was a, an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped, he would have had to serve their uh, sentence or uh, take their punishment. Uh, uh, but, but, but that's not what, what happened. Uh, uh, so so the, that, that, that violent foundation was shaken and the chains were unfastened. That's where I'm going to hang out today on the chains. Uh, when the jailer woke up and saw those prison doors wide open, as I said, he drew his sword. He was about to kill himself since he supposed that he, the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. That's another sermon. Uh, uh, the jailer called for, for lights, because, you know, jails aren't like uh, 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 Santa Rita or, or even, uh, uh, what's that, San Quentin over there. That ain't what it, it holes in the ground, caves dug out. Oh, that's how that was. And he called for, for a light so, so that they, they could, could see. And rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul in silence. And when he brought them out, say, uh, outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's another sermon right there. Uh, they answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will, thou shalt be saved, you and your household. Yet another sermon. Uh, they spoke the word to the Lord, of the, the, the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And at the same hour the, of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. And then he and his whole entire family were baptized without delay. Yet another sermon. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Five, six, seven sermons right in there. Are we going to hear them? No, Darlene will be upset. So we ain't going to hear that. Uh, so, but let me add to this Romans, the first chapter, 16 and 17, because I, I'm trying to uh, put some things in tandem here, talking about the power of God. And again, from the New Revised Standard Version, verse 16 says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation unto salvation uh, to everyone who believes he has faith uh, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks or the Gentiles. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith 
as it is written, the one who is righteous or the just shall live by faith. I want to talk about chains. I want to talk about chains. I've already admitted to you and acknowledged that there is far more than in this pericope and in this passage than any one person or any one sermon can do justice to. But I want to take a slant and I want to take a slant and move and pivot. I want to go and, and, and get a, a witness from, from uh, 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 Asata Shakur. She says, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Uh, I, I just, I, I heard that in the streets of New Orleans when we were doing the take them down NOLA movement, taking down those, those, those idolatrous Confederate uh, uh, statues that were the te testaments to the law the lost cause and, and I saw myself as a seasoned citizen a senior following the lead of young people like Michael Quest Moore a poet and a rap and a rapper and then a former principal by the name of Angela Kinslow leading us in the street leading us in the struggle leading us in the fight for freedom and I told her I would follow their lead wherever they, they would go because they had prepared we were in there fighting for our freedom I thought preacher you were a liberationist I don't know maybe I am but I'm a freedom fighter that's I'm old school I go back to the, the whole notion of freedom that's what we have to deal with what it is our duty to fight for our freedom it is our duty to win we must love and support one another uh, we have nothing to lose but our chains and unfortunately some of us want to hold on to our chains and I want to kind of address that that's why I'm coming at this uh, there was a prayer meeting at midnight yeah I know all that and there's, and there's some context and I'm gonna give that to you a little bit later but I'm gonna go to another brother of mine by the name of M. Tamishi St. Julian and this is called the Sifa and this I really wish that we would adopt this for our young people he said may we always remember uh, those who have gone before us may we be inspired by their vision and valor May their lives continually remind us that service is more important than success, that people are more important than possession, that principle is more important than power. Whatever we may do, uh, be sh may, may whatever we do be shaped and modeled by honesty, confidence, and commitment. May our children and our children's children carry forth with pride the nobility of our history and tradition to the creator of us all. We dedicate our lives to make this world better and more beautiful. But we are walking around shackled. We, we, are, we are in chains. And unfortunately, some of us love our chains more than we love the freedom that God gives us. For he, one who the sun sets free is, I knew you knew that. Now, why would I start with these two scriptural passages and then move to two cultural affirmations and purport to address both inward reflection and outward projection uh, with an initial attention to chains? Well, part of the answer is that it's going to take more than one sermon and one message to get at what I believe the Lord wants me to share with you today. So this is just a launching pad. Oh, preacher, wait a minute, you, you, I, I thought you went to the cemetery, I mean the seminary, and you know how to exegete and all that other stuff, yeah, but sometimes the Lord, this, God was working with me on this message for a, a long time, so if it sounds a little disconnected, it's simply what you're getting is what the Lord gave me as it was coming to me. Uh, in Acts 16, 20, there is uh, the background. I'm going to need to give you a little bit of background. There's the story about this. See, that whole chapter there, Paul coming to Derby and Lystra met with Timothy, uh, the son of a Jewish and, by, and a Greek father, uh, whom he circumcised, and then he took with him Timothy, that is, on his work. As they passed through the different cities, they delivered the apostles' decrees to the churches, and, and they were established uh, in the faith, and daily increases in numbers. The church grew at that time. They traveled through Phrygia, Galatia, Mys uh, Messiah, and to Troas. 
uh, those, and I'm not going to give you each of the verses, but this is the synopsis and the summary of the chapter. Then Paul has a vision relative to his preaching in Macedonia. Come on and help us. Leaving Troas, he uh, sails to Samothracia and to Neapolis and comes to Philippi in Macedonia. Lydia, a seller of prince, uh, a purple, this is, this is from a uh, uh, an academic source, uh, uh, receives the apostles' teaching, and she and her whole family are baptized. A young woman, now here, now we're getting to the meat of this, a young woman with a spirit of divination, uh, uh, one who was possessed by a familiar spirit, is dispossessed by the apostle Paul, or by Paul at this point. Her masters found that their gain was gone by all of that uh, soothsaying and so they then make an attack on Paul and are y'all with me here they make an attack on Paul and Silas drag them now before the magistrates I got to back up here and give this to see they were making money off this girl y'all didn't hear me they were making money off of her they were exploiting her and using her and she was not with the gift of God but she had a gift of something not everybody that tells something to you that you can resonate has come from God. Well, and now, so they lose their money, not the righteous indignation about that. They then go to the magistrates, to the political order of the day, and they drag Paul and Silas there, and they command that they be beaten, thrust into prison, and that their feet be uh, fastened in stocks and chains. You got to watch out what happens when you mess with people's money, especially corrupt politicians and especially those who are making money or who call themselves the captains of commerce and business and industry. They will even find a righteous and religious way to come at you. They will even have you go and say that you're with their way of thinking yet your very history is 180 degrees contrary to theirs. They might have you talking about how you support things about life and then you made a little bit too much life. I'm going to leave that alone. I'll come back to something like that later on. So they're bound with the, with the prisoners, but Paul and Silas decide to have a prayer meeting and they sing in the prison and they sing in the hearing of those who have been likewise incarcerated with them and because they prayed and listen I'm, I'm saying this now we're going to have to go back to some kind of hybrid situation of prayer meeting and bible study because something happens when you jam up and jelly tight when you're in close proximity to other folk when the when the faithful gather together when two or three are gathered together in Christ's name he promised to be in the midst well preacher do you say he can't be on yeah he can zoom too but he can zoom us when we are here together and we're going to have to find a way to work that our Paul and Silas sang praises at midnight. Are you saying preaching? Now we're going to have Bible study and prayer meeting at midnight? No, maybe once a year, but not all the time. Uh, uh, but the prison doors were then miraculously opened and the bonds of all the prisoners were loose. Their chains dropped off of them. Now, there's, there's good and bad to that. Sometimes when people are liberated from their chains, they have been in their chains so long that they don't know what to do or where to go. Sit right there in the cell. You've been free. The sun has set you free, and you're free indeed. But because the Holy Spirit is involved in this, Paul and Silas knew that there was somebody who was oppressed by the same system they were oppressed by, and that if they got their hat, their coat, and left, then all of their stuff would be on him. So he, they decided to stay. Besides, the prayer meeting was probably, if it can shake the foundations of the earth, that must have been a good prayer meeting. So it must have been that they said it was good to be here. But when they knew that he was going to take his life, they said, do yourself no harm. We are still here. We don't have nothing to do with you. We don't know who you are, but we do know who the Lord is, and we take our directions from the Lord. And the Lord says, stand still and see my salvation. 
I've got something else here. I know it might be good that Peter can get up and go, and he will later on, but you, Paul and Silas, who are locked in jail, I want you to hang out and hold on for a little while. I'm fitting to do something here. The jailer thought that they were gone, but they weren't. When he sees that, he knows that, they, listen, when you do something that is counterintuitive uh, to what the order might be, people who have been looking at you, yeah, there, there go that holy one over there, mm -hmm. will you pray for me? Until they then get to going through something. Yeah. Then they come, would you pray for me? <laughs> This jailer knew what they were in there for and saw that as a result, what kind of prayer meeting could we have that would shake the, I'm glad that cross is down now, but that would shake the foundations that would open up the jails that God would respond by making nature conform to his will and his way. That person saw, and listen, you, 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 I know you shaved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled, you sweetly saved and all that, but what, what, what happens when you do whatever it is you do? Does anybody get saved? Does anybody encourage? Does any uh, bow down head ever lifted up? I'm, I'm not telling you, uh, and I tell, tell these ministers, don't make people stand up. If you can't get them to stand up by the integrity and the, and the move of what you're doing, don't make them. This ain't no rock concert. Right. This ain't no rap concert. You ought to be singing in such a way that when that, that one over there, when Michaela, said, ah, ah, people got to move. Yeah. You don't have to tell nobody to stand up. Yeah. Even Eric, when Eric, somebody, ah. Now, you may want to do something else, but nonetheless, that's got, a witness ought to be in such a way that somebody outside of our inner circle can see the integrity of our faith, can see the efficacy of our faith, can see the impact of what it is and who we believe in. Without going through the rest of that, you know what the story said. But please understand that what upset the masters of this young girl who had Paul and Silas uh, incarcerated in the first place, uh, who, who were religiously exploiting her for financial gain under the guise of being one of Dion Warwick's psychic friends. Uh, one, one might ask why the disciples, what, what? Why, why the disciples, or why anybody might be upset with what this person was saying? Didn't she say the truth? She was talking about who they were. These are God's folk and they, they, all kinds of stuff is going to happen. Why would, why would, didn't she get it right? Well, here's what I got to tell you. Sometimes you got to be careful who even gets it right. Because you don't know what their ulterior motive is. See, she got what she got, not by the grace of God, but by a familiar or demonic spirit who had access to information and knowledge and maybe was even able to extrapolate with the effect of moving people to pay for the experience. See, gifts are given without repentance, even if it comes from God. Just because you can move people don't mean that you've got God's meaning behind you. But if Paul, here's the, here's the deal here. If Paul continued to let this trafficked girl, and she was trafficked, y'all, that's what was going on, uh, uh, ride on their spiritual coattails, the people could have dismissed, diminished, diminished, or delimited the apostles' legitimate tie to Christ and declared them to be in league with the demonic because they knew that girl wasn't of the Lord. And if they let them still do the let her do that, Despite the verifiable verbiage coming from her mouth for financial gain and profit of her controllers, if they let that go, then that would have spoiled and sullied the witness of Christ. Now, 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 now that we have some context and some background, I want to immediately give you some homework. I want to give you some assignment. That, will somebody get that preacher a, a, a job teaching somewhere so he stopped be trying to do this stuff in his sermons and whatnot? Well, I, said, I don't care. Here it is. You got. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you some 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 homework, uh, some assignments. 
I'm going to give you three terms, three concepts, three areas to research. But I'm going to give you something to start you off with. I don't see no pencil and no, no, but anyway, my, my general purpose here is to sound an alarm. I want to sound an alarm and give some words of warning to suggest the way out. Uh, uh, if you listen to the news at night, we got this, MSNBC, constantly negative, I mean CNN and, and all these others. They, you know, we got all this coming down and they're talking about stuff. But here, I, 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 as Deacon Mitchell would say, I'm trying to move us now from the milk to the meat here. The three terms are this. The first one is cult, C-U-L-T, cult. C-U-L-T, cult. The second one is civil religion. Civil religion. And particularly, American civil religion. And, and uh, uh, I need to see, hold on, what's the third one? I done lost my third one. Oh, and the third one is this, and this is the kicker. Christian nationalism. Wow. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Eh, wrong answer. Christian nationalism, American civil religion, and cult, and cult, and cult. Ah, well, Lord, help him to go fast so they can get past all this. Let me give you the dictionary definition of a cult, C-U-L-T. It is a system of religious uh, veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. A regular, uh, I'm sorry, a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. A misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person, charismatic person or thing. Somebody's starting to get this. I think someone knows where I'm going with all this. The second one is civil religion or more particularly American civil religion. And I'm going, y'all can just, you can Google, Bing, all this stuff online, you can get this, or you can get it out of courses from the seminary or anyplace else. So it, this stuff is hidden in plain sight. The second one is civil religion, or more particularly, American civil religion. American civil religion is a sociological theory that a non-sectarian quasi-religious faith exist within the United States with sacred symbols drawn from national history. Uh, a, a, a civil religion is, is, is something that is, uh, well, civil religion as used by a term and phrase by the late uh, UC uh, Berkeley sociologist of religion, uh, Professor Robert Bella, to describe how nationalism has become a belief system like religion yeah. in this country here. Nationalism has become like a, a, a belief system like religion. It is argued that a civil religion performs the same function as religion by uniting people through shared beliefs, experiences, and rituals. Are you looking at nightly news? Are you listening to the podcast? Are you beginning to get the connection here? Something is afoot and it is foul. Now, though I refer to Robert Bella, he actually drew on 18th century Jean-Jacques Rousseau and his notion of social contract. Oh, uh, that's a bonus question. Go look that up. Uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and the social contract uh, for, for a nation's uh, citizens. There's something positive. There's a lot of stuff positive in that. But this stuff has gotten twisted in the last and in this century. The third is... Christian nationalism. Oh, that just sounds so good. Wait a minute, brother preacher. I, I know you beat, beat, bang, bang, um, gala and black power. And, and you, you, you've read Albert Kleeg and you know about his movement, uh, cr uh, black Christian nationalism. Are you a black Christian nationalist? Eh, nope, 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 nope. I'm a freedom fighter, like I told you. Uh, am I Pan-Africanist in my leanings? Yup, 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 yup. Do I like Marcus Garvey? Yup, yup, yup. But I like Mary Church Terrell and, and Ida Wells Barnett. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I go with what I see as truth, but don't stick me with your ideology. Keith Simon sees this as a kind of tribalism. And if you look at our electoral scene and you look at our government, even our judiciary, you can see the impact of this tribalism where folk who are supposed to be above board and balanced are skewing things. I wouldn't be surprised if, if somebody loses their bench behind some mess. 
It's a kind of ideology. And that's what I want to say. Even, even if you're black and you like black stuff, if you go for the black and it's ideology, that, that's not it. Because we got gospel, and gospel trumps ideology every time. Gospel even trumps theology, because theology can get twisted. If it's gospel, he who is set free is because the Son set you free, and that's good news. See, what's our problem here? Uh, the problem is this ideology has gripped a part of the American populace and bound many with the chains of intolerance, the chains of ignorance, and the chains of xenophobia. Mommy, what's he talking about, xenophobia? That's when you hate people. That's when you dislike people. Uh, I, I love people, I just don't like the furners. And we got a country of furners. Look, 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 look. It's not about the ultimatum, ultimatum of loving or leaving this country or saying you're patriotic by poking people with flagpoles. Too many folks have given their lives to defend this country and to defend the model that we once believed in uh, to fall or ascribe to this okie doke ideology. There's a statue that has a, a longer poem, but the most famous words on that are this. Give me these. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, uh, your, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, not from Florida or Texas up to Massachusetts or someplace in, uh, else, but, but your, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Let me see if I can paint a picture, hit a couple points, and then I'll be done today. Uh, uh, that I, I want to draw from the text, and then I think it's useful to understand where we're going today. Uh, the present danger, the present danger is not so much that there's a bunch of folk who merely believe in lies and, de and deception. I'm, yeah, get this now. I'm not going to demonize people who have fall, fallen for the okie doke. That's not really the, 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 the danger. Do they believe in lies? Yeah, they believe in lies and deception. But then somebody has lied to you and you believed it. <laughs> Depending on what he or she looked like. Well, anyway. Um, but it, it, it's helpful to understand that there is propaganda out there whereby massive amounts of money, just like this little girl, were are raised by the confluence of cult, civil religion, and Christian nationalism. Do you not know that 85% of those people who identify as evangelicals in this country, black and white, voted for somebody other than the one who occupies the presidential office right now? The great American experiment, and that's what this is, is awesome historically. But these three factors that I've mentioned have twisted the, the religious reality for far too many of us. I fear, I fear, I fear the chains too many of us are bound with not only bind us, but they blind us to who God is and what God is about and what we should be about. Again, Keith Simon has a, a, youthful, a useful quiz to help us know where we stand. Uh, this is not against the nation. I, 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 I'm, I've been out this country, and I really, I really encourage folk to travel. Get outside this country so that you know what else is going on in the world. You might be able to appreciate your own home a little bit better. But I want to give you this, this quiz. Um, that he gave, and again, it's not against the nation, but I think it's an eye-opener. Uh, the following are five quotes whose answers you might be surprised at. Simon, Simon said, you guess which this is. I'm going to do a fill-in-the-blank. I'm going to go back, so bear with me, because uh, i got to repeat this so that we get this. Uh, I'm going to do a fill-in-the-blank. I'm going to say blank, and then I'm going to go on. But then I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to give you the two choices, and then you tell me what you think it is, all right? Number one, number one, blank is the world's best uh, last hope. Number two, blank is the savior of the world. Number three, the only way for us to live is to uh, live up to the promise of blank, 
is to give blank our all and to give it for all of us. Number four, we must keep blank first in our hearts. And number five, blank is the light and glory among all nations. You got that? Now I'm going back and I'm going to put your choices in and I'm going to see which, which one you pick. America or Jesus is the world's best last hope. America or Jesus is the savior of the world. Uh, the only way for us to live up to the promise of America or Jesus is to give America or Jesus our all and give it for all of us. Uh, we must keep America or Jesus first in our hearts. And finally, uh, America or Jesus is the light and glory among all nations. Make your choice. <laughs> Now, some of you might say the choice is obvious, but others of you might say, what you talking about, Willis? Each of those five questions actually came from quotes. The first quote came from a combination of Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Beto O'Rourke. The second one came from Woodrow Wilson. The third one came again from Beto O'Rourke, and I'm not against him, y'all, I'm just saying. And now guess who the fourth and fifth came from? The uh, orange one. Okay. My concern is that if we do not countenance, confirm, and confess that Jesus is the answer to all that goes on in those blanks, we run the risk of being bound by the chains of idolatry uh, 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 of, that the ancients and our forebearers might have been caught up in. And that's why as I'm getting ready to close now, I bring us to Romans in that first chapter. I, I learned a long time ago, even when I was in college, when it wasn't popular to be a Christian, when we had to go up against those other people saying it's somebody other man's religion. I knew better because I had Sunday school teachers, I had deacons, I had deaconesses, I had trustees, I had somebody who knew differently and taught us differently. So I was able to then uh, 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 adhere and grasp and hold on to this verse. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everybody who believes, to everyone who has faith. Uh, to Jews, yeah, that's all right, but to the Jews and the Gentiles, the Greeks, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, not by the flag, but by faith, not by political philandering, but by faith not by your team or your partisan politics, the Demodonts and the Republicans, but by faith. We've got to shake these chains off. Now, I wear this chain. Somebody say, yeah, preacher, you wear it. I wear this copper chain here because I got arthritis. And that copper helps. You ought to try it, somebody. You ought to try it. But I want you to know that, 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 that we've got to shake off these chains. We've got to shake loose these shackles. We've got to kick them off. And if God said, and here's the thing, again in the text, God may tell you, hang out where you are for a while. Because somebody knew you were as you were before you were, when you were. And now they need to see how you are as you have become then you can move out. And then your response, again, according to the text, if God has done anything for you, if God has moved mountains out of your way, if the Lord has turned your midnights into days, if he's been your bulwark and your battle axe, if he's been your company keeper in the midnight hour, if he's been a friend that sticks closer than any brother, then you got to know that there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of 
Jesus. What will it do? To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Don't, don't you want it? It's going to do what? Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Not just power, all oh, there is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. What will it do? Come on. Come on. Don't you believe it yet? It'll do what? It'll break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Not a militia. But there's an army rising up. Oh, hey, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army rising, rising up. It'll break every chain. Every chain, oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. This is the delegate. I hear the chain falling. I want to know, I want to know. Can you hear the, ah, can you hear the, can you hear the chain? Do you feel? Come on, come on, come on. Break, 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 break. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. doors of the church are open it's time to break your chains stand up wherever you are I don't care if you're at bedside Baptist get up if you're at St. Mattress get up if you're on pillars of rest get up it's time to break the chains it's time to break the chains but you might have to have a prayer meeting you might have to sing some hymns but it's time to be free free of repression free of addiction Break the chains right now. I know that's your boo, but break the chains. That's what I thought. Now they know, y'all don't know that song? You got to want to be God set us free. We ought to act like it. We invite you to come as a candidate for baptism by letter by Christian experience. Uh, you can keep playing, just saw. Uh, by Christian experience under watch care for restoration. But I, I felt as the Lord was giving to this to me, somebody is going to say, well, that doesn't flow homiletically, and I don't really don't care because the Lord gave it to me. And I believe somebody is going to go away from here free today. I believe the shackles are going to fall off. They're going to be off your feet so that you can dance, so that you can praise him, that you can give him the glory and the honor. Those chains are coming down. Somebody's mind has been bound for far too long. I hear those chains falling. They're falling down to the ground. Somebody's been bound by anger. Uh, you're upset at somebody. Let the chains fall down. Break every chain. 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 That's what it's about, y'all. That's what it's about. I have no heaven to send you to and no hell to keep you from. It's up to you. 
When I tell you that the doors of the church swing on welcome hinges, no man can close, no boy, no girl, no woman, nobody can close those doors. They are open to whosoever will. If you will live by faith, no matter what chains you bring, chains of ignorance or even oppression. Is there one today? Have, have your chains? Somebody, I want somebody, and it may not be here right now, this time, but I need somebody to get text me. Uh, instant message me, I don't like that, but do it anyway. Email me and tell me, today my chains, today my chains have been broken. They have fallen down. I'm going to live like a free person in the Lord. I, 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 I'm grateful to God. That's one I told you she started that mess with. Grateful, grateful. Good. Yeah, well, that's what we need. We need to be grateful in the house of the Lord. We need to be grateful in the house of our home. We need to be grateful in the house of this country. We need to be grateful in the house of this land because Christ is still breaking chains. You may be locked in jail and in prison, and God will set you free. Is there another? Is there one today? Out there, y'all listening, whenever you get it, whenever you get it, wherever you are, it's at one. I, I, I need the Lord in my life. That's what the jailer said. If your God can shake the foundations and cause not only the chains to fall down but to break, I want to serve your God. Is there anybody ever coming to you saying, I, I want to follow that faith that you have? That belief that you have, it is demonstrably clear that you've been born again, blood-bought, baptized, and you're a believer. Is there one today? I'm telling you, getting ready to get, I'm getting ready to let you sit down. Go ahead, sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm finished, but I'm not done yet because the Lord is still, the Lord is still messing with me. Because I, they, they, I, I believe there's, there's some strongholds in here. I know, well, don't he have a PhD? What are you talking about strong? There are strongholds in here. And, and, and they, they need to be broken. There, there's some shackles still in here. And they need to be destroyed. I'm not telling you to get up and run. I had a deacon. I had a deacon. When something like this would happen, I'm going to call his name in case he's listening. F.J. Collies. When, when the spirit Deacon Reynolds would hit him, he would jump up and run all around. Y'all think Sharon's on. He would run all around this church, all around. He would run around the church. And finally, I, you know, I was okay with that. I said, but D, well, what's up with you? Well, why you do that? He said, uh, but Pastor, I went to Vietnam. And the only way I stayed alive was to run and duck and dodge and run. And if I can run and duck and dodge bullets, I can run on a Sunday morning and praise the Lord around the church. Chains are falling. What I want you to do, one last request, is pray for this church to not be intimidated by spiritual success. I think some things are about to blow up in here. I, 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 we're, we're getting some attention and some notice and we're going to be able to do some things we haven't been able to do for a long time but here's what I found out about the people of faith sometimes we scurr the children of darkness are better prepared for stuff we need to prepare for the spiritual success that the Lord has already I believe decreed that's coming our way So I thank God. I don't know what that was, but I like that. Uh, but I thank God that God has given us this time to be together. You are not going to be the same. Trust me. Already some of y'all, I'm looking, I ain't going to tell you. Some of y'all are already different. I've seen it. Change that status. Change the status. You know, the, the, the term is come weal or woe, my status is quo. Ah, wrong answer. We've got to change that got to change this because the Lord is looking and I've already heard it the Lord is looking for folk to serve not for attention but if the attention comes don't give a false modesty oh I didn't do nothing don't just say thank you Jesus <laughs> um, I guess I'm done now 
but I, I'm still, my, my spirit is still agitated. I'm not troubled, I'm just agitated. I just really want somebody. You're, I think maybe you're on the verge of getting something, not getting it, you already, whatever it is, you already got that. But I think there's, there's something you're on the verge of getting. And I'm just gonna mess with you long enough. You know why, Reverend Brown, why I did that? Because I gave an invitation some years ago, actually decades ago, and I had members come to me and say, if you had extended that invitation one minute more, I would have come and joined again. So I knew it wasn't me. I knew the spirit was moving. And that's all I'm declaring right now. I know the spirit is moving. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, you know, you know our encumbrances. You know our chains. You know our fetters. You know our bonds. I declare, Lord, that you have set us free. And I ask, oh God, that you would allow those who have been bound to know that they've been set free. And when they are free, that they would act like they're free. Not on the loose. Because being on the loose is irresponsible. But with freedom comes responsibility. Touch, heal, and deliver. In the mighty, the marvelous, the magnificent, in the mighty name of the matchless monarch of the universe, even Christ Jesus, your Son and our Savior and our very souls. On this Sunday, let us all stand for the prayer and benediction. Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus, as I asking that you continue blessing this pastor, Father. Lord, that he may continue doing what we've been on, full throttle on for this month, Father, and that's iron sharpening iron father allow him to continue sharpening this iron father allow me to just restate what he said do not be intimidated by spiritual growth he says something like that father but you know what i mean father lord it's gonna be some that come at us father in a negative way lord teach us how to just shake that off father Lord, teach us to just continue having our hearts open. Father, continuing to learn how to sharpen one another, Father. Lord, Father, I ask that we go out, that we go out changed, Father. That we go out with chains fallen, Father. That we go out into the communities that we come from, Father, and we share the good news of what we've heard today, Father. Lord, I ask that prayer, Father, for this Beth Eaton family, Father. Lord, and I know that there was someone that wanted to come forward today. Lord, I feel it in my heart. But Father, we leave them alone, Father. We let them come under their own free will, Father. Lord, just to accept you, Father. Lord, we know that there's healing power in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to go front, back, side to side, congregation. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you. And you just smile at them. And if you can, give them a high five and say, I, I, I hope that you're safe on your way. These are the blessings I ask in the Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <sighs> I knew, I knew, I knew something was up. Have your seat. Those of you who got to go, something more important, go on and do that. But we're going to handle this business right here once we find out what it is. Mm. Yeah. Now, listen. 
and members, we have Rashela Howell coming on her Christian experience from Acts 12 Gospel. Sister Rashela, we want you to just repeat your own name because it's your name. And I like hearing somebody say their own name and then briefly tell us how you believe the Spirit moved you to come forward. Uh, first of all, giving an honor to God who is ahead of my life. Um, born right here in Oakland, California, um, 31 years old. I was introduced to Axel Gospel back in 93. I was about maybe two years old almost. My father, he's a pastor as well. He was, um, grew up in East Oakland under Pastor Bob. Uh, since the pandemic, I haven't really been back to church besides many of funerals. And when Sister Kimmy and Sister Eric invited me, um, I couldn't say no. I was like, Jesus, you did so much for me, even in, through my transition and right now being homeless. And if it wasn't for me being homeless, I wouldn't, be able, I wouldn't have been able to meet them and meet you all neither. So I just believe by the grace of God that he's doing something in my life right now and I'm in transitioning of getting from off the streets, left gangs a long, long time ago, and lost a lot of my partners that's, that didn't make it, but did lead to Christ. So I want to give back now to Jesus for what he did for me because I wouldn't have been. I don't look like what I've been through, but I'm thankful. Bless your name. Say your whole name again. All of, all of it. I want to hear all of it from you. All right. Uh, my name is Rashayla Ray Lee's Hazel House, Santiago. But I go by Shay or Rashayla Howe. Um, but you guys can just call me Shay for short. Show folks, show Shay. Shay. <laughs> this is the move of the spirit. I had no idea it was going to be like that, Shay. So thank you so much. Uh, I told you I'm going to start out getting you in trouble with it. I, I want a deaconess. I don't know which one I might want, but I want a deaconess to give me a motion, and I want a deacon to second it. And y'all can get upset. We got a church meeting. You can do something about it then. But they are equal in the body of Christ. Yep, sure are. Maybe not in the bylaws, but ain't in the no, body. There ain't no distinction. Right. 
Russia. Been properly moved in seconded that we accept Sister Rochella into our body of believers. I like that. Are you ready to vote? Yes. All in favor say aye. aye. The opposers are not here. Necessary. And we got folks here who, who have access to resources, but then again, you should know that by now. Let the church say amen. Amen. 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 Was that enough of a hint to the song we should be singing? <laughs> We've already had our final prayer and our benediction. Give somebody a fist pump. If you're not scared, shake their hand. All right, that's my prayer. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You're just...